Hello and welcome to Exploring Computer Science with Mr. Watts. In this project, I'm going to talk about how you might make a board game where the characters advance from location to location on the screen. In this case, this one is using uh, two lists, the lists of the locations of the different squares that the character may go to. This is particularly useful if you are using an existing board game, say you're going to try to do shoots and ladders or something like that. So I'm going to uh, show you a couple of lists I've made. I have happened to name these X position and Y position. And in those two lists, I want to include the X and Y locations that represent where I'd want the cat to go if it was on that square. So in the very first place, I would want it to go to 122 or X minus 173, Y 122. That's about where I'm at. I'm minus 171, 124. It's close enough. That would be my first entry in here. The second place I'd want to be would be about right there. And that's showing as minus 106, 122, minus 105, 124. Again, we're pretty close. And the third position, minus 63, minus 62, again, 123. So hopefully you can understand how these two, these entries in the list represent where I want to go. Could be tedious to build those. I'll show you a little tool that I've written for you that can help you fill in these actually rather quickly. So uh, in order to navigate a list, we need to have some way to keep track of where in the list we are. And that's where I've chosen this my position variable. I've actually made it a local variable for this sprite only. So this cat has its own variable there. If we were going to have multiple players on this board game, then each player would have their own copy of my position. And otherwise, the code would work exactly the same. So my position right now is set to 0. Let's set that to 1. That should be that square. Uh, my position 1. Actually, that should be the start square. And then how do we go to that location? Well, we could just know that position 1 is minus 173. I'm going to type that into this box here, minus 173 and positive 122 for y, and I could glide to that location. Well, that's great, but I don't want to type it into all of these boxes either. I don't want to have a different glide command for every tile on my board. So that's where we use my position to find out where we should go based on uh, the X position and Y position lists. So this little bubble here, item my position of X position, that's the X position list. My position has been set to 1. So item my position of X position should be minus 173. If I change this to 2, set my position to 2, now that number has changed to minus 106. Those match. So this one just simply pulls out the location in my list based on where I am. And I can plug that right in here instead of typing a simple number. The other one is just the same, except now we're looking in the Y position array. And so this should take me, uh, if it's all working right, to position 2, which should be right there. Let's try it. And indeed, it takes us there. If I change that to 3, it's changed, and then glide one more time. Off it goes. I'm going to change it back to 1, take it to the start, and uh, you'll see it goes to the start. What happens if you send it someplace that you haven't defined? So we haven't defined a, fi a tile 4 yet. So we'll set it to 4, and we'll try to glide there. It goes right to the middle of the screen. So if you find yourself going to the middle of the screen, it usually means that you don't have the right locations in your lists. Okay, so that's the command. If I put a change my position by one in front of that, let's start this at zero. 
and then click right here. It will change it to one, go to the first position, two, go to the second position, three, go to the third position. And now you can see this chunk of code works great as long as we have the right number of uh, things in our list. Now let's scroll up to here, see the finished code. Um, these lists look kind of ugly. We want to hide them when the green flag is clicked. Set your position to the very first one and go there. So that starts us right at the beginning. Boom. And then when I receive move, we're going to move based on the die value. Uh, one, two, and you can say it went that far. And uh, it thought it won because it ran out of spaces in its list. So let's go look at the move command. It's going to repeat the number uh, based on the costume number of the dice. And it's going to check to make sure that we're not going out of bounds. We only go to locations that have been defined. And if we can, we're going to change my position by one and glide using that command we talked about at the bottom. Wait two tenths of a second and do it again. If your position happens to be at the end of the list, um, then you can say you won and you're done. So that's all the code. We can go to anywhere we want. The hard part of that is getting those numbers in the list. And so now I'm going to jump over to this um, little tool that I created. I'm not going to go through all of the code, but I will just say that it's a utility that you can put in your program and if you run it then it can help you fill those lists and the way you run this code is by pressing M to activate it so I'll zoom in a little bit better closer you, you press M to activate this and if I press M I just clicked M it gives me some help M turns on and off the mouse locator and including showing this screen to add mouse XY to the lists Z deletes all the entries from the list, and X deletes the last entry if you've made a mistake. So hopefully we can go through this. It'll go pretty quickly. The first time I hit M, it shows me this message. The second time I hit M, it's going to show me my actual coordinates. And then if I were to click, it adds those to my lists. And if we went and showed the list right now, you'd see the list grew quite a bit. Both of these lists have grown quite a bit just by clicking on them. I'm going to go ahead and erase those, hide those lists. Um, I actually want to start over. So Z deletes all the entries from the XY list. That's handy if you want to start over. It's a dangerous thing, so... I type Z, and actually it won't work. Z only works when I'm in this mode. So Z, and it gives me a warning. You sure you want to delete all? Let me pull those up so you can see that. Are you sure you want to delete all those? I'm going to type Y for yes. And there we go. Our lists are empty. And now I can start at the very beginning. Hit 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see you can go through this pretty quickly. There's 11, 12. It does show you what number you're on if you care. And we're done. Hit M one more time to make that thing go away. And we now have very long lists with all of our stuff in them. If we were to start the game the cat starts at the beginning. We roll the dice. It moves five squares. You can see it's doing the job that we expect it to. Four more squares. Oh, five more squares, sorry. One square, four squares, and we should be pretty close to finished. And it recognized that it won. So uh, making lists, using lists is actually pretty easy with that mouse locator to, act, to enter all of the values. You saw how quickly that could be done. Uh, good luck if you're doing a game. I uh, hope this helps, and we'll look forward to seeing what you come up with. See you next time.